Okay, I was asked by somebody uh, about how to model something in Revit, and what I think essentially that person wants to do is what in the in the Rhino environment is called a two rail sweep. And what I've done is created um, two um, two curves that are complex curves three dimensionally, and I've created a, a sweeping curve that'll sweep along them. So if I use the command sweep two, and I grab grab this rail and this rail, and then a cross sectional curve and hit enter, I get a shape. And the shape is, it's resolved uh, all the way through. There are no gaps, and it runs along the rails. So, uh, and you know, uh, more power to him. Rhino continues to be a very awesome tool. And the question is, how does one do something like this in the Revit modeling environment? So I've gone into, actually, Revit 2016 because um, there's a benefit to being in the 16 environment that doesn't exist in the 15. I'll explain that later. But this is this is the model, and the model was a, a barrel arch that was created from um, a chain of two splines, and then a kind of counter. Uh, let me see if I can independently select this. A counter crossing negative void that creates a another arch. And the person asked, "Can I do this? Can I run a um, a profile?" Up along the two edges of this of this arch, because what you see is the thickness of the arch is variable. And the way this person did this model, I'll uh, grab this guy. This is an adaptive component family, and I'll open it up and take a look at it. And you'll see that it's two adaptive points with, mo with one model line between the two, and then a um, a three point spline drawn out in space. And I think the problem with that one, well, there's a couple of problems with this. Is that this point out in space is um, is not associated, so it doesn't have any relationship built in with these two adaptive points. But also, when I go back to the model, and the, you know, the idea was you would grab this profile, and then I would tab through until I find an edge, control click it, tab through until I find the other edge, control click through it, and hit create form. And you see I get an error message that says it cannot be created doing, due to self-intersecting geometry. And that kind of puzzled me. And I made another video about this prior to this. But I think I've figured out a way to do this. And I'll show you how. So I'm going to get rid of this adaptive component family. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to tab through and select one edge. And I'm going to divide the path. And it's by default at 6. I'm going to crank that up to 20. Um, divisions, and then I'm going to tab through, grab the other edge, and do the same thing. Crank that up to 20. Okay, so now I'm going to use another profile that I made that looks very similar, and I'll show you how it's structured. If I drag profile 2 in, and I lock it onto one of those points and one of those points, and I'll go in and edit this guy. To show you how it's constructed. Okay, so I've done something similar, but what I've done to create this arc is I've actually taken a point by dropping it down onto this line to host it onto the reference line that's hosted on the two adaptive points. And then I've actually set a work plane of that point and put this third point on it and then grab that third point and offset it. So if I grab this guy and, uh, and click show host, yeah, I don't know exactly know why it's not showing me that, but its host is this point and it's the plane of this point. So I grab that point and I actually create an offset. If I push this down a little in 150, you'll see what it'll do. It moves nearer to this point. And I, I can do that for you right now. If I tab through, set that plane, I show it because the environment's so big, it's like kind of huge. But the plane, it's the sort of vertical Z, uh, YZ plane of that of that point. And if I drop a point down here into space, grab it, move it right onto the center line of the point, and it gives me a warning about identical points in the same place. But then if I go ahead and offset this one by a hundred with a parameter you're going to see it kind of jumps out into space. 
So I did that and then actually selected three points and then did spline through points. So that's how this, this was created. I'm going to grab this and crank them out just a little bit more so it's the same as what we're looking at. So I'm going to jump back into the model and that, that's the two-point adaptive curve that I've, that I've added to this. Now the benefit of that is that when I, I go ahead and, and do another one, what these guys are going to do is, is keep a normal relationship to the face of this of the, of the surface, which is like essentially a surface created by these two curves that create the dividing curve. And, um, and the reason why I did two of these is what I want to do is, is control click these two guys to add them to my selection set. And I'm going to use the repeater tool and sort of array them over the rails. So you'll see they actually keep their normal relationship to the surface of the arch, which is kind of cool. So now I've got this repeater, right? And you, you probably know what I want to do here is I want to kind of, ex I want to loft along these transverse arcs rather than use the, use the rails themselves. But it won't let me, and that's why I'm in the 2016 environment. I could place each one individually, that'd be rather quick, but the nice thing about 2016 is you, you have this remove repeater tool, which is kind of like exploding a block, and it makes them all separate. Now, what I'll do is I'll right click over one of these guys and say select all instances. And what you're going to see is this doesn't actually work. So when I hit create form, it gives me the same issue. Cannot create due to self-intersecting geometry. So I thought, okay, well, this didn't work, but I had a hunch and I tried it and I found out something interesting. If I select, like, say, three of these guys, so we actually have a truly curving shape, and I hit create form, I start to get some behavior, which is what I want to see. So this is cool. This is riding along the rails. It's expanding up and, uh, and kind of doing what, this, what, what I had originally intended. So I'll grab the shape again, and I don't know if you guys know this, but this is cool. If you grab a shape and then grab more transverse ribs, if you're doing lofts, you can actually add to, to the original loft, and it becomes one continuous surface. And what I found was something very interesting. I'm just going to kind of sneak down underneath this thing. Still got that shape selected. I'll continue up, do it again. Then I'll do it, let's see, one more time. At some point it's going to conk out on us. I think that's right about here. If I grab the shape, I'll grab the next curve and hit create form. No, nope, that's not the last one. Maybe it's the next one. And this will change depending upon the geometry of your model. There it is. Okay, so what happens is, and I think this is, has been the problem all along, uh, once, the, once we got these curves normal to the surface, is that there's a certain point where there's a relationship between the axis of the final curve and the beginning curve. And I don't know what that is, if maybe they, they are, if they sort of fill it off in the distance, but it wants to kind of return back around and bond into the front end of this thing. So that's a kind of limiting factor in this, but there's a workaround. So if I just click back one, I can just really make two arcs. So if I come in and I grab this guy, and all the remainder of these guys, it's a little bit of manual work. It's not quite as, as easy as just selecting all instances. But if I do that and hit Create Form, you know, that this is the desired effect. So it's kind of it's kind of emulating a two rail two rail sweep, but it's not really. It's sort of building across a set of uh, of ribs. And actually, you know, the more I sneak up on this, I can see that it's not uh, not super clean in terms of a model. It's not really building off that exact rail. It's, it looks like it's I don't know, it may be a visual uh, issue, but Looks like it's sort of paunching inward. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, but it definitely looks like like this is this is sort of emulating uh, a true loft, but it's not quite exactly getting it. But it's pretty close. It's pretty close. So if you want to do something like this, where you're 
you're creating a profile that runs along two separate rails. Um, you, I guess you would refine it by going into your um, your rails and changing that gradation. Now I, I put in 20 points, but maybe you could put in many, many more and make it very, very fine so you don't get very obvious little sliver gaps between the, the arch and your and your profile. So that's it, and thank you for watching.